for many years, the focus was on inflammation. I mean, we're talking for decades, people said, let's put people, put these patients on prednisone and other anti-inflammatory immunosuppressive drugs like cyclophosphamide and azathioprine, even though we never really had good studies to prove that they worked. And certainly in practice, we saw that the patients were dying regardless of whether or not they were put on these drugs. So the thought there was that inflammation was the driving force and inflammation left untreated would lead to fibrosis, but that was not the case. They are a very uniform group of people, so that when you hear their stories, it's that indolent onset of, of at least six months and oftentimes a year more of symptoms, shortness of breath, dry cough. If you look at their CAT scans, you find a very classic appearance of what we call usual interstitial pneumonia, where the periphery of the lungs in the subpleural regions is what's affected the most. The bases of the lungs certainly more so than the upper lobes. You find a lot of honeycombing and a paucity of, of ground glass type changes. So not a lot of that on the CAT scans. You listen to their lungs and the vast majority are gonna have very crackly type noises in the lungs. And we look at their pulmonary function tests and it's classic restrictive lung disease with low force vital capacity, low total lung capacity, and a low diffusing lung capacity. And as the disease progresses, they become hypoxemic and start to need supplemental oxygen. But as to who gets it, like what are the risk factors? Maybe about five to 10% of patients have a hereditary form of it where you see that it runs in the family, but most do not fall into that category. We're still trying to figure that out. Two drugs were approved by the FDA in October of 2014. And that, they are truly the first drugs that have ever been approved for this, this disease. So one is called perfenidone. It goes by the brand name of Esbriet. The other one is Nintedinib, and it goes by the brand name of Ofev. Both of them, in terms of, of results, were pretty similar. So I emphasize to patients that when we use these drugs, in a perfect world, we're looking for improvements, that they're going to actually feel better, and, and the numbers will be better in terms of their pulmonary function tests. But that's not the case for this disease. What the studies showed for both of these medications was that compared to placebo, the patients on the active drug got worse at a slower rate, meaning that they, their decline in lung function over time was less than if they had just been on a placebo. Perfenidone is an antifibrotic drug, so it, it interferes with collagen formation, whereas nintedinib is what we call a tyrosine kinase inhibitor. But as I said, the results of the clinical trials were fairly similar. For both of them, you must monitor liver function tests, and, and in a certain small population of people, a small percentage, you will see that the liver enzymes rise and it's a reason to, to stop the drug. Uh, the other thing is some GI side effects. Perfenidone can cause nausea. That can also happen with nintedinib. Uh, there's also a decent amount of patients with, with diarrhea on nintedinib, about 60% of patients. Perfenidone can cause photo pho photosensitivity. That is not the case with, with nintedinib. And in the long run, I think we always have to talk about cost. This is a definite step forward, and, and we are very excited about it because now we have something to offer patients that actually can, can slow the disease progression.